All right. Uh, good evening to everyone. I'm pleased to be our host for today. My very good name is Ojisa. Today, a comprehensive conference on several essential issues of climate change with educatory guidance from UNICEF. The resemblance of the Sustainable Development Program. Today is the first day, day one, of this very, very wonderful event. And the topic is climate change is becoming a problem you can taste. And lastly, we start proper and have our guest speaker for today. Uh, without whom this project won't have been possible, I want to acknowledge the presence of our co-partners in presence of the media partner. I want to appreciate the mute break and also the beverage partner. I also want to appreciate Brinzy and also our advertisement partner. I also want to appreciate Lumba Obage and the blogging partner, Tim Holtz, organizing partner, LWT, speech partner, which is Start of Times, and then of course our honorable host, Wapno Talks. I want to appreciate these very people. At this time, um, we shall be looking at uh, our very first host today. Finally, or lastly, we shall be having uh, the last um, guest speaker for today in person of Dr. Apama Banerjee, ma'am. We'll be glad to have you right now. Please, ma'am, if you're online and you can hear me clearly, Please unmute yourself and turn on your video. Oh, yes, yes, I can hear you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, a very beautiful evening to you. I'm happy to be your host for today. And I'm also happy to have you as my guest. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Yes. Yes, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, finally, um, before we hear from Dr. Apemem, Banagi ma'am, um, I'd like to make a very brief paragraph of ma'am. And looking at the biodata of uh, Pamema, Dr. Pama Banerjee is from India. She obtained PhD Botany from University of World One, India. Postdoctorate from University Catalysa del Mola, Chile, where she is presently working as assistant professor in six years research experience. Wow, six years, six four years. This is interesting. Now. She worked on extra, on extramorphic or extramorphic microbiology. Her interest also includes biodiversity, conversation, and bioinformatics. This is beautiful. I love this. And then let's quickly take a scroll down. She has achieved a lot of things, but I'll quickly pick on very five vital important achievements which she has made. Uh, number one is three running international projects and more than 25 publications in both national and international reputed journalist, um, journals. Oh, wow, this is interesting. Take it again. Listen to these 25 publications in both national and international reputed journals. Oh, this is interesting. Kudos, man. That's a very wonderful achievement. And secondly, I'm going to run through the second achievement, which is she is also a member of scientific societies, which are chilling society of microbiology, which is S-O-M-I-C-H in brackets, Indian Biomatics Society Berkeley. All right, the India Science Congress Association and Association of Microbiologists in India. Wow, this is interesting. I love this achievement. It's really, really taking me off my feet. And then she has also featured in the documentary podcast in London, UK, to talk on microbiology of extreme environments. That was in 2020, last year. Okay, and then she also featured in World Campaign, one, 1 million women in STEM in Spring 2020 last year. Wow, this is beautiful. And finally, the last uh, achievement, which is more important too, 
which I just want to share with us. But after this one, I'm going to mention, if you scroll down to know more about her, she has achieved more than these achievements, which I have just mentioned. And finally, she also had the best oral presentation at 24th West Bengal State Science and Technology Conference. A quality man. Congratulations. This is a very good achievement. So at this time, please, we want to know what the pick is in this topic for today. Over to you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michael, for your uh, kind introduction. It's so good to listen about myself. And uh, before I start my presentation, I was just like awestruck to listen to Isaias and also Palak because when I see the youngsters, though I, I feel I'm young too, but they are like the uh, one decade back of our generation. And I, when I see that the youngsters are so much motivated about climate, uh, about global warming, about um, uh, conservation, Conservation. I feel so good because then our planet Earth is on the right hand. The future is on the right hand. So I was really so much interested to listen to them. I'm really thankful to be in the Plant Your Future campaign, Pope Initiative 1.0 on the first day, that is 11th of January. Um, so we today we are going to talk about climate change is becoming a problem that you can test and i'm going to talk on the some case studies microbial conservation and the summary i'm aparna banerji and i'm working as assistant professor in uh, a center of advanced studies in universidad católica del maule talca chile so before i start here actually you can see some of the major events that has happened over the year 2020 around the world some major climatic change impacts what has been those the Assam monsoon flood uh, and a big number of animals lost their life in that flood we all know the forest fires in different parts of the world in North America in Brazil in Australia the Atlantic hurricane spring tornado these are only a few to mention which have actually lost billions of lives so when the loss of lives are less we don't count them uh, and this is just the beginning of how we are testing the climate change so climate change is just loading and it will be more if we just don't take care of them and that's like the alarm that the environment is giving to us so according to the wmo climate risk extreme events and the related impacts millions are affected for floods around the world ocean acidification is happening wetland ecosystems are damaged Thousands of deaths are associated to heat waves and the wildfires. There have been a lot of internal displacements in lakhs associated to the flood and drought around the world. The global uh, ocean oxygen is decreasing in an alarming rate. In millions, the displacement happens around the world, which is associated to the weather and climate disorder. And finally, Millions of persons are in malnutrition, which is associated to drought around the world. This is just an overview of how the climatic change is giving us the test. How the climatic change is showing us just a brief summary of what we are facing around the world. So before I start, I want to start with the words of Carl Sagan, which is the who is one of the famous American planetary scientists. And he has beautifully told that the Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. But let me start in a way that uh, to, uh, the Earth, the planet Earth is the only thing that we have. All the inhabitants of planet Earth, this is everything that we have. And we cannot get back if we lose one thing. There is no reset button on it. So how beautiful our planet Earth is. Let's see some images from NASA from their web page that we have seen. The first one is from Maldives, a country located to the southwest of India in Indian Ocean, which is rich in number of atolls and coral islands. And due to the rise in the overall sea level, these atolls and the coral islands are in danger of extinction. Then the next image is of the Gangetic Delta, which is in Bay of Bengal and is home to most of the Bangladesh and West Bengal, India. It is located in one of the most densely populated countries of the world. We know Bangladesh and India, very highly densely populated. And uh, the swamp forest in this kind of deltas are associated with the flood, 
which questions the food securities around the world. The another image is from Madagascar and the changing landscape in the heart of Madagascar we can see here. So what we can more see here is the drainage in the Betsiboka estuary due to the historical deforestation of the rainforests. And you know the most of the warming that has happened uh, is in the coastal mangroves and mangroves are the uh, key dominating factor that holds the soil. So if we are losing the mangrove ecosystem, we are losing the soil also, leading into landslide and land losses around the world. Then from the left, the image is from Antarctica. We can see lenticular cloud near Mount Discovery volcano in Antarctica. The West Antarctic ice sheet has warmed significantly in the last 50 years. And you know, most of the warming has happened in the winter and spring. This is alarming because this is not normal as the warming has happened in the winter and the spring. The next image is of sea phytoplanktons, which is near the eastern North America during the autumn in the land of North America. So the chlorophyll begin its dominance in the ocean photosynthetic cycle, resulting in the color tone in the water that we can see here, little yellowish and greenish color around the water. They produce half of the daily oxygen in our planet. Half of the daily oxygen is not produced by the plant, is produced by the phytoplanktons in the sea. But due to the overall impact of ocean warming, the phytoplankton community have dropped nearly 40% from 1960. So 60 years and we have lost 40% of the phytoplankton around the sea. And it's continuing the dropping, let me say that. And then finally, the Himalayas the snow-capped peaks and the ridges with major rivers near South China. And rightly, the Himalaya is called the third pole of the world. It is so extreme, the North Pole and the South Pole. And Himalaya is called the third pole of the world. So let's talk about some of the major climate change events that has been reported in UNICEF, the environment and climate change. By UNICEF, it is told that the climate change and environmental degradation undermine the rights of every child around the world. How? Because the global hunger continues to rise, according to the United Nations report. More than 800 million people are now hungry. Imagine. And more than 150 million children, their growth is stunted putting the hunger eradication goal at risk because this is a big number of people are at risk. The children are among the most vulnerable as the extreme weather even continue around the world. Look at 2020, how many different climatic change impacts we have faced around the world. There have been heat waves, there have been floods, droughts at different parts of the world. And thus we are creating the world which is difficult for the future generation. More than 2 lakhs children are affected as heavy flooding in Somalia brings the risk of malnutrition and disease outbreak. And UNICEF is definitely working for that to meet the urgent needs of these most vulnerable children. But 2 lakhs children, that's a big, big number. And this is the world that we are keeping for our future generation. The kids in Zambia are paddling to school because they want to have the education, the basic thing that a student needs, foods and the education and the shelter. But during due to the flood, they are paddling to the school. This is heart-wrenching because we, the people who are from relatively safer countries, how is the situation around the world or how is the situation around the for the people who are residing in the coastal regions? They are in threat every time. In Kenya, severe drought threatens to leave 4 million people in food insecurity. Imagine the children in the northern Kenya, they are impacted in this big crisis. They are in hunger, they are in thirst, they are in the disease-prone region. So according to the NASA, we have till now talked about the biotic impact. Let's talk about the abiotic impact because both this biotic and abiotic impacts are connected. The land ecosystems are becoming less efficient at absorbing carbon dioxide. Why? Because we are losing the plants because of the overall deforestation events that is going through our planet. Water limitation in the tropic offset carbon high uptake in the Arctic greening. So the Arctic region is becoming green. A pole is becoming green thus limiting our fresh water. This is dangerous, isn't it? So let's talk about the third pole, the third pole that is Himalaya. And 16 countries in the Asia have 10 rivers around this Himalaya and 16 countries of Asia is dependent on these 10 rivers. 
one third of water resources of our world is originating from Himalaya. More than 50% of the river basin are facing extremely high water stress because the regions are becoming arid for the climate change impacts. The rivers are transboundary from different countries. So if one country is facing one damage, the, the transboundary, the, um, the neighboring countries are also getting affected. 375 million people have no access to the power generated by the water there. And the 61% of global rice is grown in this region. So if the region is becoming added, the food security is all the time interlinked with the water. So 61% of the global rice that is produced by this region is also going to be hampered. 4.3 trillion US dollar of GDP is at risk for all these things. One in 2.5 Asians lives in these 10 river basins and 1.77 billion people lives in these 16 countries 280 plus cities with 300k plus people's life is at risk this is a big number definitely nothing to fear but definitely we can do something we cannot have something back there is no reset button but we can start thinking now before this number started increasing so uh, uh, during my doctoral program, we have worked in a, a, a part of uh, Eastern Himalaya biodiversity hotspot, Sikkim Himalaya, and we have uh, reported the urgent conservation need in Sikkim Himalaya. So, let me tell India is among the 17 mega diversity zones in the world and consists the part of four biodiversity hotspots. What is biodiversity hotspot? Biodiversity hotspot is the region which is in the threat of extinction but have big biotic resources. So uh, the four biodiversity hotspots that India is a part of are Eastern Himalaya definitely, Western Ghat part of Indo-Burma and Sandalan biodiversity hotspot. This complete landlocked state Sikkim comes under Eastern Himalaya biodiversity hotspot and it contains nine types of key forests around the world. The documented statistics of floral and faunal diversity of Sikkim is rich. However, its geographical positioning in the third pole, making it vulnerable to the climatic impact. How? Landslides due to the deforestation, decreasing average rainfall in the pre-monsoon and the monsoon, decreasing forest coverage, crop productivity is also related to the decreased forest coverage, food quality is hampering and definitely the air quality index is getting deteriorated every day. So what are more associated risks? The glacier driven hydroelectric power because we are increasing the anthropogenic pressure in this biodiversity hotspot every day. The transhumance pressure is also another fact because there are several international boundaries near Sikkim Himalaya and livestock grazing is one of the factor that's increasing the transhumance pressure. So Sikkim Himalaya definitely needs urgent biodiversity conservation calls. So before I talk about the different areas exposed to around the world for hurricanes, for desertification, for droughts, for the small islands and the deltas, which are very much prone to these extreme vulnerable events, because some of the islands due to this climate change can be completely submerged. And imagine we will lose thousands of biotic diversity even before knowing, because many, many parts of the world still needs exploration, isn't it? So let's talk about some of the fact that is also alarming carbon dioxide levels in the air are at their highest now in the last 65 lakhs year how much 415 parts per million big amount the global temperature 19 of 20 warmest years on record since 2001 in just two decades only 20 years and 90 warmest years in the decades 2 degree Fahrenheit global temperature has increased since 1880. This is for us, this can be very less amount, but this is a very big amount and crucial amount of temperature for many living bodies around the world. The Arctic ice, Arctic summer ice shrank to the lowest on record since 2012. 13.1% have been shrank in last one decade. 13% of ice we have lost in just one decade. Polar ice. The satellite data shows that the Earth's polar ice sheets are losing masses. How much? 428 billion metric tons per year. 
and finally the sea level because if the sea level increase for all these we are going to lose a big around of land and a big around of life the deltas the small islands and many more the global average sea level has risen 178 mm over past 100 years that is 3.3 mm per year look small but with times the impact is definitely very very big So here is the change in Earth's total heat content. The land atmosphere and ice heating is very low, but from 1960, if we see, it's in logarithmic phase. But the ocean heating is in stop. So imagine the temperature of ocean is increasing, and the creature that is surviving in the ocean, starting from the small phytoplankton that we have talked, that produce half of the world's oxygen. is in risk because these phytoplankton this alga or the marine creatures are are like small clocks and they are regulated with very minute changes of temperature so this small change of temperature can have a big climatic impact that we can test so when we talk about climatic change how we are testing it global warming all the time we correlate it with carbon dioxide carbon is the new language and when we think about carbon dioxide or carbon we think ah carbon is our enemy no 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 definitely not there are three different type of carbons fugitive carbon durable carbon and living carbon and the problematic part is the fugitive carbon that has ended up somewhere unwanted is not wanted and can be toxic it includes the carbon dioxide that we release regularly in the atmosphere by burning the fossil fuels and the uh, methane leaks deforestation industrial agriculture continuous urban development anthropogenic footprint plastic in the ocean is all negative carbons are the fugitive carbons so there are management strategies for this also car what are those carbon negative carbon neutral carbon positive now carbon negative is a idea that is coming up these days uh, uh, during uh, few few years back during my doctoral program we have also worked in a publication which is biodiversity hotspot of bhutan and its sustainability and here are some beautiful images of bhutan it's like one of the one of the beautiful country that i have visited for me because being an environmentalist being a microbiologist being a biologist a uh, a country that has big anthropogenic or human footprint big buildings we are not attracted to them we are attracted to a big country which have big management plan and let me say bhutan can be the model for the world model bhutan the only carbon negative country in the world when it started it started back in 2009 during the united nation cop 15 meeting in copenhagen when bhutan promised they will remain carbon neutral for all the time and at cop 21 in 2016 bhutan reiterated that promise and how is the way that bhutan becomes carbon negative they have placed a ban in the all log exports they have amended their constitution in a way that their forest coverage would never drop below 60% ever ever free hydroelectric power is generated by bhutan's rivers instead of using the less eco friendly fossil fuels definitely using water resource is not the option but this is another option because we are decreasing the emission of the extra fugitive carbon in the environment and this free electricity is provided to the rural farmers so that they don't use the fossil fuels so in a way we are contributing they are contributing to the environment another key thing in the well being of the bhutan's environment is bhutan's political agenda is based on gnh index model gross national happiness so environmental protection just quickly comes in a top priority for the country more than 70% of the country is forest covered so bhutan becomes a carbon sink of the world it absorbs more carbon dioxide than it produces so it is carbon negative absorbs 7 million tons of carbon dioxide annually and only produce 2 million tons so they are basically absorbing 5 million tons of carbon dioxide annually that we all are producing that the rest of the countries are producing isn't that amazing why it's amazing because they have a big big sink of plants they have a big constitutional amendment that the world should learn from the bondel bhutan so the climate change as we talked it threatens the biodiversity climate change can only be explained when we talk about the human influence because human is influencing all this e ecological footprint around the world gas emission deforestation and the consequences can be two 
abiotic consequences and biotic consequences definitely both are interlinked because polar ice caps are shrinking coastal habitats are flooding droughts and stops are more intense than earlier the ocean is acidifying and all this is in turn uh, is affecting the biotic community of the world extinction is occurring in the last centuries like anything else we have lost a lot of species migration of the new habitats are happening and the yearly events are changing like flowering time is changing because the climate change the small temperature change that we were talking the drought that we were talking so during all this time that we have talked we talked about plants we talked about animals but when we talked about the kingdom of life other than these plants and animals what are their microbes microorganisms bacteria archaea proteids fungi and never we talk about them in the conservation there is the lack in the conservation biology there is the lack about the conservation that we talk around the world why because according to the microbiology society microbes play a key role in nutrient cycling biodegradation climate change food production and spoilage cause and control of disease producing life saving drugs manufacturing biofuels cleaning up the pollutants and what not just the thing is probably we cannot see it and we think that they are not doing it but if we are losing an ecosystem we are losing the millions years of footprints that was preserved over there even before knowing their identification this is alarming microbes are dictating the global climate for billions of years by playing an important role as both user and producer of greenhouse gas imagine the world 3 billion years ago when the life started which life was there microbes and slowly 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 they changes the climate they have taken part in the biogeochemical cycling and the world that today we are living microbes have survived it a lot during all this time period so microbes are omnipresent they are in sea ice in mud volcanoes in hydrothermal vents hot springs fumarolas hyperacidic lakes deserts acid mine drainage nuclear contaminated sites soda lakes and were not and all these extreme environments are extremely vulnerable to the climate change impact that we are facing so we we will lose them before even we understand them so i will not go into all these details that i have worked uh, but we we started to understand the microbial diversity in the extreme environment and what are the things that they are doing in that extreme environment how they are helping producing some life saving compounds so we have worked in one of the unexplored a relatively unexplored hot spring of west bengal india called pani phola which is high in temperature and arsenic content and we have worked a lot in different publications related to the pani phola hot springs microbial diversity my phd supervisor have also participated in southern ocean indian sector expedition 2011 professor rajib bandopadhyay from bardwan university and uh, here we can see the map of southern ocean antarctica and what are the factors in antarctica less temperature different trace metal salinity so we have also tried to understand the microbial diversity and the value added compounds of the microbes that are surviving in the extreme environment of southern ocean antarctica and presently in chile i am working in a chilean government project fondesit initiation in the unexplored hot springs of the uh, uh, hot springs volcanic origin hot springs in andean mountains they are acidic low chlorine sulfate rich and most interestingly the temperature of the hot springs are very high abundant uv because we know that the south pole have big ozone hole so the uv radiation is very high here and definitely for volcanic origin this has different trace metals so we are trying to understand the microbial diversity and how it's taking part in the environment with some value added compounds in this typical unexplored environments so here are some of the beautiful images of uh, the university that presently i am working and before i end up i will end up with this slide because when we talk about the conservation biology as i told we never include microbial conservation in that but it's needed to include them it's not i'm not the first one who is talking about that definitely the talk started in 1964 in a publication called conservation of microorganism by a journal annual review of microbiology but this talks about the cultivable microorganism and let me tell you 
only 1% of the world's total microbes are cultivable and the 99% rest are non cultivable so if we are going to lose it because of the climate change impact we are going to lose it forever then in 2019 there have been work but we need more work in this area in 2019 there have been another work or that talks that conservation biology needs some microbial renaissance a call for the consideration of host associated microbiota there we again called host associated microbiota that is the microbes who are associated with plants or animals but what about the microbes that is surviving around the world and taking part in different roles so then in 2020 we have one work from our group and we have talked about the emergent climate change impact throughout the world and call for microbiome conservation before it's too late before we just lose them so what we talked there that we need an integrative conservation management what we talk about plant conservation animal conservation and microbial conservation all together so basically we need to bridge the cons gap between conservation bi biology and microbiology so this conservation biology and the biological science need to be amended with a gap where we talk about all the biotic and abiotic factors related to it and before we end up let's talk about two of the most positive event that happened in 2020 during the event of pandemic so covid-19 due to the corona outbreak nature started hitting the reset button globally this is slow very very slow like the negative impact happened slowly the positive thing will also happen slowly slowly more slowly and what have been the reset buttons there have been decreased air and noise pollution immaculated beaches animals are relatively free this is just the start and it's very less than what we have created in our world the another record breaking news that we have found in 2020 is the ozone hole over arctic is now healed and closed but there is a big misconception related to it what we think that this arctic uh, ozone hole is repaired because of the corona pandemic no this is nothing related to corona this hole had been about three times of the size of greenland imagine the size of greenland but this has been repaired due to the strong polar vortex and it is repaired so that's definitely a very big news for the world and this will definitely impact in the global warming in a positive way but well all we can say is let's save the environment and i'm so much thankful to pope initiative 1.0 that we are talking about climate change talking about climate change is not so common but we need to talk more because until the time a person is listening we have to poke and poke and poke and communication science communication is one of the biggest part of that so all this work and the presentation would not have been pos uh, possible without the help of the university that i am working now ucm my department cm and the funding uh, the gover of government of chile uh, about the andean mountain unexplored hot spring from the city initiation the laboratory sendio the part of the panifala hot spring work during my pa and all the biodiversity work that i have shown for bhutan and sikkim biodiversity for bardwan university west bengal the ministry of earth sciences government of india for the funding in southern ocean expedition and i am also a core member of bioclus organization the bioinformatics society of india and i am also a part of the uh, society of microbiology chile and finally there is my contact mail and my twitter id and instagram id and in this time of the ever impact ever increasing climate change impact what we can do is being connected and talking about this more and more frequently so i am thankful to you all for this opportunity and i hope i have not taken extra time thank you all so much you're welcome ma'am it was very interesting hearing from you and knowing your view about today's topic so quite very interesting i must say i um, really appreciate you ma'am so um just in few seconds and um, what would be your conclusion statement for us i think the conclusion statement as i told earlier that the uh, climate change impact is ever increasing in this decade like any other decade so uh, the, the plants the, there are two consequences biotic and abiotic definitely the plants animals and the microbial life are at big risk due to this event the planet earth most importantly our planet earth the only thing that we have is at risk but there is a big 
gap that need to be bridged between the conservation biology and microbial conservation need to be more frequently talked in conservation biology and inclusion of microbial conservation need to be there in conservation biology so that's what i can say as a microbiologist point of view thank you very much once again ma'am we are pleased to um, hear from you and to all the speakers we are really pleased to hear from you um before we call it a wrap I would like to um invite Mr. Shaikh Saka from What Not Talks. Over to you Mr. Saka. Yeah, hello ji. I I hope uh, you can see me and uh, hear me clearly. Yeah. 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 yeah, thanks every single one of the guest speakers over here in the, uh, in today's session and I am really happy that whatever I or my team thought of that this conversation will be and i can see exactly that my and my team's prediction was absolutely correct because we actually kind of uh, distributed the conference or the seminar into such a way that we will have some educatory guidelines we'll have some activist mindsets and coming together and bringing up a magical thing which is i i can see literally it happened right now palak mystery was there i think uh, there was also sai sandrans and uh, dr aparna banerjee also was there and uh, ma'am has actually kind of put all the logical and scientific terms in that and uh, palak and sai have actually given the experience of their own activists or they have given the experience of how they have been an activist or as sai was also mentioning that every single person doesn't has to be an activist can also be an environmentalist who can actually educate people on how to save or how to become an activist or how to actually participate individually in gaining confidence and in gaining the other people's trust to become like a trusted person who can actually guide them to a better earth and thank you every single one of you to join today we without saying much thanks again i want to say please let us stay tuned again for tomorrow tomorrow is another edition we we'll continue from tomorrow with another topic and it will be an interesting one again with interesting guest speakers which we will be hosting again tomorrow so please I beg you make sure you are available again to more viewers out there. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Bye.